This is the 2011 F equals MA exam, and this is problem number 13. So we have two discs, each with a radius of 2 centimeters. And in between these two discs, we have a solid cylinder with a radius of 1. So if we look at it from the side, we know that the inner cylinder has a radius of 1, while this larger disc had a has a radius of 2 centimeters. We also know that it's placed on a surface where it can roll but not slip. Additionally, a thread is wound about the central cylinder, so this is a thread. And when it's pulled with an angle of theta is equivalent to 90 degrees to the horizontal, or directly upwards, the apparatus will roll to the right. And last we find what is the largest theta, what is the largest angle, such that it won't roll to the right if we pull on the thread. So we now we have to consider what it means to not roll to the right. In other words, if it doesn't roll to the right, it's not going to move. Nothing is going to happen. So it's going to remain in a state of equilibrium. It's going to remain in a state of equilibrium. At equilibrium, there are two cases we have to consider. The first case is that there is zero net force. And the second case is that there is zero net torque. So let's first draw a free body diagram. We have our inner cylinder and our outer cylinder. The first force we can have is the force of gravity, mg. Additionally, we also have our own force f, which we are using to pull on the thread. So we can also decompose f into f cosine of theta, this is theta, and the vertical component of f is f times sine of theta. Additionally, since we know that the apparatus will roll to the right, we know that the force of friction is going to point to the right also. And we know it's going to point to the right because it, when it's rolling to the right, as it does when we pull the thread at 90 degrees to the horizontal, this bottom part is moving to the left. So friction acts in the opposite direction. So now we can start writing our equation. So let's deal with torque first. Torque is equal to R cross F, or in other words, R times F times sine of alpha, or the angle between these two vectors. So for R force F that we are pulling on the thread, we find that this R is actually 90 degrees. So we know this is the radius of the inner cylinder, or we can call it R1. For the force of friction, we find this, this is our R, so this is R2, which we also know as 2 times R1. We also know it as 2 centimeters. But let's write it like so. So our net torque is 0. So our torque net is equal to 0. And if we define rolling to the right as positive, then we have R1 times F minus R2 times the force of friction. In other words, the torque caused by us must be equivalent to the torque caused by the friction. But now we have to figure out the friction force. So now we consider the case where the net force is equivalent to zero. So what net forces do we have? Well, we can consider our horizontal net force. F horizontal, so Fx for horizontal net. It must equal to zero. If we say moving to the right is positive, then we have our friction force is positive. It's going to the right. And our force, our horizontal component of our force, or F cosine of theta is going to the left, so it's negative. And these two have to cancel each other out because our object is neither moving to the right nor left. So we find that the friction force is equal to F times cosine of theta. Now I can plug this back into our equation here. So we have R1 F1 is equal to R2 times F cosine of theta. And we know that R1 equals one centimeter and R2 equals two centimeters. So now we can solve for theta. Uh, oops. So here it is an F1, it's just F. So these two Fs are the same, we can cancel them out. 
So if we cancel f on both sides, we have 1 is equal to 2 times cosine of theta, or in other words, cosine of theta is equal to 1 half. And for what theta is cosine of theta equal to 1 half? Well, that theta is going to be 60 degrees. So we say that the largest value of theta for which it will not roll to the right, aka stay in equilibrium, is 60 degrees.